uh, uh, hello and <laughs> w- welcome back to the show. Um, this is the show. This is a little behind the scenes action of what goes on in between episodes. Um, oh my god, look at these guys. He's gonna oh, kill you. Oh, see, I thought I could catch him, but I couldn't. Oh, but I, I'm immune to falling, so... God, that is, that is well, honestly the best... Good for you. It is, it is the best cheat. Like, I'll take this over a dog any day. <laughs> How dare you? Look at him go. Well, he's so graceful. <laughs> he's so... <laughs> like, oh, like a breaching whale. Don't talk about my child like this. Oh my gosh. How do you... Oh, <laughs> that didn't work. No, he almost killed me. Oh, then we would have been How do you throw even. when you're on these tapestries? I don't think you can. But you just threw Oops. me! I spit you out. Yeah, that, the same difference. Check this out. Oop. <laughs> okay, first. First. Okay. Yeah, check that out. Ooh! I'm so good at this and game. And she's by! Oh, sorry. No. <laughs> uh. Oh my god. Oh my. Oh, oh. death from above, for real. Yeah, how do you like that? Oh, that was weak. God, this is this is one's gonna take forever. God, that's the worst. <laughs> God. <laughs> Look at me, you didn't say sorry. Uh, um, thanks. Well, welcome back to Terrible at Games <laughs> Punch. Speak for yourself. I was doing great until you started interfering. How dare you! <laughs> yeah, dog, check that the out. dog was upset by me licking it. Ow. <laughs> This is horrible. Oh. That didn't work. Yeah. Alright, one more, one more, one more. Uh, Good job. You know what? Rude. Okay. We're gonna be here all day. There you go. Yeah. That's mine. Whatever. Whatevs. Don't even curve. Good. Alright, cool. We're done. <laughs> done with this game. Thank you for joining us on this, this epic journey, but like has to be, but whatever you kept smacking me in the face. <laughs> Don't forget you killed. You me kept getting in the way of my balls. Those were, ah, damn it. Hey, I hate these. I, I feel bad for these shy guys because they obviously have no control over their flying. They're just sort of hanging by propellers that have their own sort of autonomy. Ah. Uh, uh, <gasps> Okay. Look what you did! You killed me again! But I killed the shy guy. And me. The ends justify the memes. This got, that's gotta be a thing. Also, apparently uh, my uh, ah! apparently my save me from fall damage isn't working anymore because now I'm just eating garbage. Yep. Yay, we did it! Somehow. <laughs> we both got a little So, Leg, do you like superheroes? I do. What superheroes do you like? And uh, how do you enjoy your superhero media? Are you fishing here? Am I fishing here? I'm, I'm asking questions. I've, I've been on a big uh, hero kick lately because uh. um, it started with watching Flashpoint Paradox on Netflix, and I'm like, man, that interpretation was Aqu- of Aquaman is really cool. And I remember they had like Everything's free! Woo! Yeah. But um then I remember they had like this really badass interpretation of him also in the Justice League animated series and just like oh, Unlimited yeah. and started watching those and I was like, man, I haven't watched a top of the fourth wall in a while, which is a sort of nostalgia critic type show about uh, reviewing bad comic books. And it just got me super excited into superheroes and reading comics again. And that's what I've been doing lately. See, that's the thing. I like comics, but I'm getting kind of sick of movies. That's fair. I don't know. That's fair. What kind of comics do you enjoy? Uh, I 
don't know. I usually grab whatever looks good. Yeah. And this uh, is the only ones that make a point of collecting are ones that involve uh, Loki's reincarnation arc because I like him when he's a kid or a teenager. Oh, yeah. I think he's way more interesting in that than like as an adult. Yeah, that's fair. Because any... that's uh, more aligned with the kind of character that he is. Yeah. Actually. Well, and he's like a he's like way more complicated then because he's trying not to be Loki. Oh, all right. <laughs> like he wants to be good, but he can't really. Dude, these running moles are. Uh, but other out than of that. The only one I had, the only other hero I kind of make a point of collecting is uh, Nightcrawler. He's my favorite uh, X Men. Cut He's my favorite. Night okay. I still He's haven't great. seen the new X Men. I just got really excited because yeah. I saw they were bringing. Cody Scott McPhee is really good as young Alan Cummish, <laughs> who is I just love who Nightcrawler. Is, who is amazing as Nightcrawler. I love the. Um, I didn't really grow up with many Marvel uh, superhero shows when I was younger, except for X Men Evolution. Oh, which yeah. was my Yeah, that's why shit. I fell in love with Nightcrawler. Yeah, no, the Kurt Wagner in that show was awesome. And that was a, and I feel like the the rogue in that show was sort of like just part of one of those just like awakenings in me cuz a lot of girls <laughs> I find attractive look like rogue in that show. <laughs> like a uh, like some, like definitely like hard southern belle with big hair rogue from the original X-Men oh, yeah. series is really attractive too, but like goth rogue is my oh <laughs> Beans and potatoes. <laughs> I cannot. I, I don't know how you're supposed to get that. Okay. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, God. Okay. Oh one of us is just gonna have to throw. You know what? Why not? Okay. I'm not even gonna oh care. My God, I, I don't care. I don't care anymore. I care immensely, but I don't care anymore. Darn. Okay. Darn. Hey, come here. Come here. I'll, I'll throw you there. Oh, there goes all my arm. Nope. Yay. Yeah, there we go. That's teamwork, just like the X-Men. Da -da 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 -da. Um. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. What was I talking about before? I was talking about... Uh, heroes. Talking about heroes. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. Have you heard of um, the Invincible Squirrel Girl? Yes. Yeah, I, I um, I heard a lot about that on the, sort of just circulating through the Tumblr sphere, and mm -hmm. uh, I was at Barnes Noble and I uh, picked up the book and I was reading through it, and it's really fun. It looks fun. Uh, like, have you read any of it, or are you just no. seen bits of like, let's get nuts? Yep. It that's great. First of all, amazing, amazing <laughs> catchphrase. Uh, basically, the premise is that um, you know, she's she lives in the attic of the Avengers like home base. <laughs> And she goes to college, and there's this great bit where she actually has like a tail, and the way that she tucks it is that she tucks it in her butt, and she acknowledges that it's like now it looks like this very conspicuous booty, and it has like, <laughs> and it shows like background characters staring, and she, and she yeah, and she oh, talks to and okay. she talks to uh, like her squirrels, or squirrel or, uh, singular, who's great, um, and but like it, it shows her just like actually talking to it, and the squirrels just doing. Squeak, squeak, and stuff. <laughs> and she befriends Galactus, which is great. <laughs> um, but yeah, and um, oh, okay. So one of the biggest issues with comics and continuity in particular is that like it's just hard to sort of uh, introduce characters who have, have sort of an established backgrounds to new readers. Uh -huh. But uh, Squirrel Girl does this really great thing where all the characters that she sees have Deadpool cards. <laughs> And they're basically like little character bios that are written by Deadpool about oh. certain characters that summarize their sort of character history and That's powers cool. and stuff. And it's great. Um, they did that in a Teen Titans JLA book, uh, um, Technus something or other. And um, it, that's how they sort of introduced, you know, uh, old Titans, because that's something that had a rich history and continuity, but it's still a story that you can read without having read other Titans books. Which is how you should write stuff, is... Um, uh -huh. That's how I view sequels, is, like, the better your sequel is if you can watch it without having to watch the movie that came before it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, which is part of, like, a big criticism that I have with Marvel movies. Oh, because that's yeah. Because, yeah, I haven't even seen the newer ones because I'm so far behind in them. Yeah, and it's, and it's hard because when it's like, wait, who's this character now? What's this, yeah. What are they doing here? Wasn't this one dead? Was this one alive? Which is, you know, normal. And that's just kind of, like, the nature of franchise. Like, um, 
same thing with Harry Potter, though, because, like, imagine watching, you know, Deathly Hallows Part 2 without oh, yeah. seeing the other six, or uh, seven. <laughs> That'd be... That, that would be an interesting trip. Oh. I, I need to find some. I need to miraculously find someone who's never seen any of the Harry Potter films, yeah. and then just make them watch that. There are actually a lot of people who haven't seen Harry Potter, so I shouldn't say it's miraculous. But a lot of people have seen those. That, that wizard boy. Are you going to see Fantastic Beasts? Yes, probably. Yeah. How are you going to read Cursed Child? No. Ah. Because it sounds like a really bad fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. I'm not a fan of things that follow the kid. And I'm like, I didn't fall in love with the kid, I fell in love with their parents, so why would I want to know about the kid? I guess that's true. Like, uh, uh yeah, that makes sense. I'm reading a comic series called oh, Saga by Brian K. Bond, which is really good. Um, I remember this guy. Oh. Yeah. Aw, right um, on But yeah, so Saga is a book by Brian K. Bond, and, um, Oh my gosh, I forget the artist's name, but she's really great. And uh book won like a ton of Eisners, which is kind of, which is like the comic book Oscars, and it's what sort of had me like wanting to read the book in the first place. And um that is a story that's kind of rooted in cliche with like, oh, they're they were two lovers from uh opposing, you know, ideologies, families, societies, all that jazz. But um the dialogue is really good. And a lot of the storytelling and world building is really clever, so it makes up for it. Oh. But uh, I'm sure. But the book is narrated by the child of the two, which is like a hybrid child between oh. like one character has wings and the other one has horns. So I have a feeling that the book is eventually going to follow the legacy of that kid. Mm -hmm. But because we've been hearing this kid's perspective since the beginning, I feel like it's still going oh, to be yeah. interesting. And I just don't want to see the parents die yeah. yet because I'm not far into it. And people who probably have read it and are listening you're just like oh you fool you have no idea what <laughs> sadness you're in for yeah my, my issue is just like oh hey look there's a kid now we're gonna watch <laughs> the kid yeah and i'm like no <laughs> why, why do children ruin most things Going back i can't to... even think oh yeah think if... of something off the top of my head that does that now that has kids in it or it just like suddenly drops the parents and goes straight to the kid right um yeah, I mean, I was trying to think of uh, Boruto, but even then Naruto and all the other characters in that series are still extremely prominent. Um, I stopped reading that same with, so many years ago, and then I heard about a kid named Salad. I'm like, okay, I'm glad I got out of that when I did. Oh, are, are, is that what they call Sadada? Yeah. Salad? Everyone just calls her Salad. That's, that's really funny. And it totally makes sense now that I think about it. <laughs> That, that is right out of, like, an Akira Toriyama book. Because that guy loves his puns and his naming things after food. Oh my god, look oh at Oh no, I little... killed its mom! <laughs> oh my god, they follow me! Oh, they're, oh these are what you throw at people? You are their mother now. I love them. Oh, this is cute. This is oh really cute. God. Why haven't we been paying attention to this? Wait. Oh my god. My baby's died with me. This is what your baby's become. God! Oh, this is great. I this changed is, your mind. This is my favorite level. This, this is the best level. You, Hi, Mom. The only downside is Aww. that you have to do that. <laughs> I didn't do it. Poochie did. Right. I already forgot what those were for. Yeah, you have, to, you have to throw them to make pads. It's like Ivy the Kiwi. Oh, yeah. Or uh, whatever Kirby game that was for the DS. Uh... Uh... I was gonna say oh. Epic Yarn, but um... It's a uh, rainbow curse. Uh, yeah, rainbow curse. Yeah. Or uh, can was rainbow curse or canvas curse the DS one? I have no idea. Oh, but, bye. Yeah, see you later. Rainbow curse is the DS one. Okay, and canvas curse is the clay one. Which is that game is kind of obnoxious because <laughs> it's entirely like oh you have to look at the gamepad the whole time while it's still displayed on your TV. So unless you oh. have like amazing like hand eye coordination. Uh, yeah, you start off just with this up here. Much like a uh, Rainbow Curse or Canvas Curse, whichever. Both. Neither. <laughs> that about covers it, doesn't it? Sure. Oh. Oh! It's our other oh. friend. Hey, Nikki! Your friend's back! She's, she's cheering silently. <laughs> 
Oh, come on. Come on. Okay. okay, so you probably have to push him this way, and then push him that way. Alright, well, we're gonna have more fun with Blue Friend next time on Hodunk Punch. Ah! I, 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 we should stop doing that. Oh, that's, 